Hello everyone, so we're back today with another video and today we're going to be reviewing a co-op student's resume. So this person is a UBC mining engineering student and he sent this resume to me uh, just to get some feedback on how he can improve it. So some things about this resume, uh, first of all, I changed out some of the personal information uh, just so it can help him remain anonymous. And so with that said, let's get started. So at the top here, we have the personal information. So as you can see, I changed the names out. Um, so you have the first name and last name. Person included the address. So which is good. Email and phone. So you always want to have these contact information. That's good. And as well, if you have a LinkedIn account, include that as well. So he has that. And now the last part here is he included what discipline he is in. Typically, you don't really need to add that. So I think you could, it might be better off, better off to just take this out. All right, so moving on, uh, the next section, or rather, rather the first section of the resume, uh, it's the technical skills. So because I went through the UBC co-op program, I noticed this is how they lay out their resume. So that's fine, but I think because this person is actually just uh, first year entering into second year, where the technical skills, uh, while he does have, as you can see, at least five bullet points for each section, so software and programming, tools slash, uh, tools and hardware. The thing is for, at least for a mining engineering position, you typically don't really need any of these you for sure need to use Microsoft Office. Visual Studio, probably not so much. SolidWorks, not so much, but it may help uh, the interviewers understand that you have a good understanding of how CAD programs work. C and MATLAB, typically don't need to use those in mining engineering co-op positions. Um, as for tools, soldering iron, drill press, bandsaw, press or break, grinder, I don't think you use any of these at a co-op position, uh, but these would show that you're a handy, a uh, handy person. Uh, so in case you do work in the laboring position, it may help. Uh, as for hardware, the oscilloscope, breadboard, signal generator, multimeter, Arduino, uh, highly unlikely that you need any of these skills here. And so. It's a debatable point, but I actually don't pro like how UBC engineering uh, requires people to have this section specifically. So if you're not in the co-op program where you're required to have a specific resume layout, uh, I will actually recommend that you take this off so you can shorten your resume unless you have skills that you know for sure are relevant to the position that you're applying for. And as you can see, this resume is two pages. Typically resumes are one page, but then again, UBC co-op, um, their format is a standard two page. But otherwise, for any other scenarios, I would recommend that you keep it to one page and just make it as short as possible, as short and as concise as possible. But so for this person specifically, uh, you can keep this on, the technical skills section on, Next up, we have education. So we have the school, we have the degree, and if you're a student, you can add this section here where he says uh, how long you're available and starting when. So this is always good to have because interviewers don't know when you're available to start or how long you're available for, and this will help them determine if you'll be a good fit for their student postings. And here we have the graduation dates, some additional certifications uh, that are good to show. So we have the dr driver license, food handling, and standard first aid. So I actually recommend put the uh, latest certification first. So just flip the orders here and you'll be good. Otherwise, Education, if you have a 
high GPA, then it will be good to list that here as well. Uh, next section up, we have technical projects. So again, as I mentioned, because uh, this is a student that's just entering into second year of his degree, um, therefore he doesn't have work experience. So uh, if you're in a similar situation, then uh, it'll be ideal for you to replace that section with just any technical projects that you have worked on. So first we have the virtual rainwater harvesting harvesting system. Um, so the project name is bolded, which is good. I guess going back here, uh, you probably don't need to bold everything, probably just maybe the first two and the rest can leave unbolded. Just a uh, small preference thing, but typically you only want to just reserve the bolded fonts for anything that's uh, that you want to highlight. So jumping back here, we have the virtual rainwater harvesting system uh, and it's done. So included the location, which is good. So we know that this is a school project and the date that it took place. So it took place over a month. First bullet point, use Microsoft Excel to simulate this harvesting system for a remote community which play second for second in our class for satisfaction. <coughs> All right, so use Microsoft Excel to simulate. And so for these bullet points, I would uh, always use action verbs. So uh, you did use used, but in this case, I would use a, another word that would sort of capture the core achievement of this project um, and which would be to simulate. So instead of use Microsoft Excel, I would say sim I, I would start with simulated uh, this uh, using Microsoft Excel and I would leave up for satisfaction because I'm not sure what that exactly refers to. Um, included which place second in a class, so that's good. Um, but if you could, if it's say like second in your class out of like a high number of people, then I would include that as well. So again, um, start with a action verb that captures the highlight of your achievement. So in this case, it would be the word simulate. So start with simulated a virtual rainwater harvesting system for a remote community using Microsoft Excel. Uh, next one we have this import a topog topical graphic site data into MATLAB to determine optimal placement for physical components. So again here the so because importing is not uh, exactly a technically difficult thing to do. I would start this sentence with not even determine, but I would say, I would actually delete this word and just say optimize the placement for physical components uh, by importing topical, topical graphic site data into MATLAB. If I interpret this sentence correctly or optimized placement for physical components yeah, by importing topical graphic site data into MATLAB. And here we have did some data analysis. Okay, and let's see this one here. So while you have the word applied, I would probably put something like analyze quantitative data. And yeah, start with the word uh, analyze. 
just analysis is one of the highly sought after uh, traits of candidates for any engineering positions. Um, so if you put the word uh, analyze first, it would just help shorten up the sentence. So analyze uh, quantitative data to factor criteria such as all this to select the most satisfying solution. So I guess the word satisfying, I understand what you mean by that, but this sort of touches more on the emotional side. You want to talk a little bit more about the logical side. So uh, I see you have a cost aspect to it. Uh, some environmental aspect to it, some efficiency aspect to it. So perhaps you would just say like the most cost efficient, environmental friendly and optimized or sorry, most efficient solution, depending on which, depending on if you actually use all of these criteria, criteria to determine the best choice. So again, to summarize, uh, just change up, mainly just change up some of the act, uh, action verbs to use words that capture the highlight of your achievements. So here we'll work with four other students to design an autonomous height of retrieval device, claw, that ranked in the top 40% of the class. So again, I will put the word design at the first, at the front. So design and designed and then this, blah, 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 with four other students and that ranked in the top 40% of the class, this, because uh, it's not that high up, I would actually leave out. Develop program to test Arduino functions. Uh, I'm assuming by a program, you mean you wrote a script, so Developed. Yeah, okay, I guess this this would be fine. Maybe just specify this as like a uh, programming script or something. Drafted orthographic engineering drawings of the claw in SolidWorks. Yep, so this is good. This captures the most important thing that you've done. Um, which is drafting. Build physical components using hand tools. Yep, that's fine. And perhaps uh, if you do decide to say like take these ones out, this is where you would say using hand tools such as and you would list the hand tools that you use. Conduct the experiments and test runs aim to reduce risk during operation. Uh, this wouldn't say it's necessary because it doesn't really I guess showcase any specific skills that you've used because they're all mainly done through in these first four bullet points and it doesn't specify what sort of risk you're looking at whether it's like a safety risk or maybe cost risk but I'm assuming it's probably related to safety risk So yeah, this I would say probably not necessary, or if you do want to include it, uh, be a little bit more specific about what risk you're aiming to reduce. Scrolling message. Okay, so let's see what this is. Program a scrolling message on a seven segment display to improve, pro improve proficiency in C and gain Experiment with data acquisition modules. So maybe here I would just uh, include the words uh, scrolling message uh, program. Uh, 
Um, so I think this could work if you just said like improve, uh, program a scrolling message on a seven segment display in C. I don't think you need to add these three words in. Uh, I guess mainly the point I'm trying to get across is that you don't need to show the purpose of this project is is to uh, improve your skills, but rather you want to show it as you use these skills to achieve something. So you could, in that sense, you could leave out um, the improving proficiency and gaining experience, but rather just incorporate um, how you use C and how you use data acquisition modules. Uh, into your achievement itself. So that's something I would revise. Electromagnetic motor. Sign a motor that consists of a rotating metal dowel and coiled wires all powered by a battery. Okay, so that's good. You said design something, which is a definitely a skill that you want to highlight. Constructed metal components and electric wire with the use of hand powered, with the use of power tools and soldering iron. So that's good. You constructed is the key uh, skill that you want to highlight. So that's good. And you do have all these uh, projects listed in chronological order, starting from the most recent to the earliest. So that's good. Other work experience. Okay, so this section here is for anything that's not engineering or mining related. So we have a personal care home. So served meals, paying a close attention to food handling instructions as well as the residents diet and allergies so I guess for this point um, there, there's multiple way, multiple ways you could go about it um, and one is whether you want to highlight serving meals or cooperating with nurses as sort of your main achievement but I do think uh, cooperating with nurses is probably the more important skill. It shows teamwork and probably communication skills. Um, so I do think that this is probably the w right order to word this sentence. Uh, escorted residents to safety during a fire and gas leak and diligently follow the emergency protocols for both instances to ensure the well-being of all parties involved. So I really like this point that I included here because it showed um, leadership skills and definitely a safety mindset by following emergency protocols. So for a mining engineering position, this is definitely something that uh, you do want to touch on, uh, whether it's through your cover letter or through your interview for sure. Um, this is probably, yeah, definitely something that you do want to bring up in the future. Uh, and otherwise, uh, this is all pretty good. Uh, volunteer experiences, UBC Kababayan. So I'm not sure what this is. So for sure you want to, in your bullet points, um, at least incorporate something that will allow me to understand what this is. Um, so I see you are a VP Executive External, April 2020 to present. So my initial assumption is that this is going to be a club of some sort at UBC. So yeah, connected potential club sponsors and negotiated towards the acquisition of club sponsorships, uh, including these businesses, promoted club events through social media and contact to prospective participants, served as a host for a club's icebreaker events, uh, where you were placed in charge of entertaining around 30 participants through the organization of meaningful discussions concerning campus life. Okay. So, 
So uh, in general, I would place for bullet points, whether it's for here in the technical projects or volunteer experience or anywhere in general, uh, I would place the most important one up front first and then uh, highest to lowest basically. So, but some people do like to sandwich their weaker points in the middle. Um, but I think in this point, this is okay. If you just have three, if you have maybe four or five, I would do uh, best or rather most important to least important. But if you have three, then um, the sandwich method is okay as well. So this would probably be um, the lowest highlight just because it didn't re uh, require the most complex skill set but here uh, this point would definitely showcase communication skills and this point here would uh, showcase communication or leadership skills or both and I'm just thinking in my head right now this may even be your first point because it does so this point here definitely showcases leadership skills this here is leadership and communication skills and I'm just thinking if there is a way you can shorten this Ideally, yeah, in general, we just want to keep bullet points as short as possible. But overall, this is a pretty good message. Uh, next one is Association of Southeast Asian Clubs. Uh, looks like this here, perhaps you got the wrong province. So, manage bank account. where you also select the collection of money raised from individual events organized by six other cultural clubs partnered with our association. So, and then you listed all the other clubs. All right, raise, over thought the collection of money raised from individual events. So I'm not sure if this is indented, intended to sort of uh, bring up two events or two achievements where one is overseeing the collection of money and the second part is fundraising uh, fundraising in through events in partnership with uh, these six other cultural clubs. But if it is, I would recommend it splitting it into two bullet points. Okay, and the next one here you have actively budgeted expenses and purchases involving club funds. So I'm not sure if this would sort of duplicate with this. Because I'm assuming the money that you raise would go into your club funds and by managing bank account, this is a more detailed description of what you are doing up here. Responsibly balancing them between donations made towards disaster relief foundations, prizes for club events, and annual savings. Okay. So I like this sentence here. Uh, I also don't know if you need to list all six clubs here because it just adds a lot of length to your resume. And yeah, do consider to see if you can somehow combine or perhaps just, yeah, just narrow this and this seems to represent the same thing right here. 
and perhaps this is a separate bullet point. So maybe this can be a come this part here can become a sorry this part here can become a separate bullet point itself. So next section we have the awards. So we have high school valedictorian. So that's good to include for sure. And student athlete scholarship award. Yep. So that's good. Interest in activities. So jazz band, honor band member. Yep. That's good. High school varsity and club level basketball team captain. So definitely good for sure and team captain so definitely it will show some signs of leadership here and if you guys have won any championships uh do include it here as well just to show uh some high level achievement and lastly we have fitness or and weightlifting and so in general for people uh that includes fitness or weightlifting uh, if you do say do a specific form of fitness or weightlifting, let's just say if you do um, Olympic weightlifting or maybe CrossFit, do sort of be more descriptive in that area because w when people bring up your resume and they look at it and sort of just look for talking points with you during an interview, um, these points could help bridge the gap uh, just for and just form sort of a uh, closer more personal connection between you and the interviewer um, and the point of including these interests and activities it's just to sort of help you uh, distinguish yourself from other candidates and sort of bring you into life uh, as to more than just what you have on your resume and just your hard achievements and by forming that personal bond with that interviewer, it can really help sort of elevate their experiences with you and as a potential candidate that they may want to work with in the future. And so overall, and you, you also want to look at the formatting of the resume. So overall formatting looks pretty good. So, we want to look for one consistency and two just everything is formatted in in place so the margins all look pretty sharp and we do have the uh footage here from ubc co-op that uh, we do have to include if you are in part of the co-op program so all the bullet points are in in place all in one line the margins are all the same for both pages. Fonts are all the same. Nothing's too big or too small. The use of bolding is overall pretty consistent. Um, you, so that's used for the name, the headers, the titles. Uh, but I think this may be like a UPC co-op resume formatting thing but these I personally wouldn't bold and same as these ones here and overall length of resume again so UBC co-op typically their standard is two pages so that's fine but otherwise I would try to aim for one grammar overall I think is okay Grammar is not my strong, strong suit, but uh, it seems to read fine. And in general, just to summarize, place your strongest action verb that captures the highlight of your achievements in the front. And overall, it looks pretty good. So that's it for this video. If you guys have other resumes you want to review or other topics that you want me to cover for mining engineering, uh, just feel free to leave a comment below and I'll consider making them in the future.